All right, guys, I promised you a Tom Brady video, and I'm going to stick to it. We got to be quick, though. Girlfriend's in the shower. We're going to the Kings game, and I got to start watching Thursday Night Football on my phone. Without further ado, let's go. All right, time to figure out what's going on in Tampa Bay. Why can't they figure this out, and why is my video quality so shit? All right, I'm shutting it down and I'm starting again. All right, we got the video quality back and Tom Brady's hitting pedestrian throws on first down. We love to see the first down passes, Bucks. Keep it up. Tom Brady goes for everything. Oh, on the fucking money, but Mike Evans drops it. Of all people, you would never expect that from Mike Evans, but here we are. People like to give the Bucks a terrible hard time about the first down runs, and I'm like the first one to do it, but uh, the only thing worse than a first down halfback dive is a second and ten halfback dive. Like, you might as well just punt. And there, Brady might as well have just thrown it to the defensive back, because it's kind of what he did. That's a pickable ball. So we got an elite ball to Evans, dropped inexplicably, a pedestrian throw on a tunnel screen, and a pickable. That's drive one, moving on. Alright, we got drive two, Brady comes out slinging again. Love the first down throws. First down throws aren't worth shit if you run it up the gut for no get yards on second down. That's just bad call play calling. I don't know if Brady's doing it or Leftwich is doing it, but it's terrible. Similarly terrible, we just don't have the third down play. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> I guess it was a short pass. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to chalk it up as pedestrian because I don't see how else it could have happened. That's a good throw. Brady properly using leverage, finding the void, simple. He puts the ball behind the tight end, keeps it simple. First down, Brady comes out throwing, pedestrian, quick hitter. Second down, Bucks run it halfback, dive. They always run duo right up the gut using their terrible left guard, Luke Gadecki, as the lead man. And it never works. You might as well punt. We don't get third down, because who would want to see that? But it is a pedestrian throw. This, however, is not. Look at Brady. His left guard, the one I highlighted earlier, Luke Gadecki, just gets eaten. Just gets eaten alive. That play right there, you have two of those. You should never step foot on a field again. Terrible. Brady fading away, uses leverage, sits his receiver down so he doesn't run into the coverage. He has the opportunity to turn back up field. It's a good throw with a plus move. We love to see that. Just goes to show you don't need to be athletic to be able to manipulate the pocket properly. I mean, just look at that. If he leads him, he's going to, I mean, he limits the amount of yards after the catch he can get because that safety is right on him. He probably earned himself a solid three or four yards just by properly using leverage. Now, I don't think this was a good snap. Now, that's a bad snap. Brady does a good job to recover the ball, though, and still get it out. We'll call it pedestrian because it was catchable. Two plus moves because he got the ball out quick and he recovered the bad snap. I don't love it. Again, that's pedestrian, but you can't throw that if you know that the guy's right on your receiver. Third and eight, that's a bad throw. Threw it against leverage. I know he was trying to, so here's what he was trying to do. He's thinking, I got an inside leverage cornerback. If I put it out here, he'll catch it while spinning and he'll just cut outside and he'll have all this room to run, right? But he puts it just a little too far outside. If that ball's on his hip a little bit, he has a shot, but that's just not quite accurate enough. And of course, the Bucks are punting from the plus 40 because they're just poorly coached. It's really, it's sad to watch Buccaneers games these days. Bring back Bruce Arians, where he at? All right, drive three coming up. All right, drive three. Please do something, Bucks. This is really getting sad. Play action, halfback screen. I actually kind of like that play call. That's not bad. See, the thing about the Bucks is that they actually have really good plays that they run. It's just that their sequencing is terrible. That's a really good halfback dive. And that right there is what will keep Byron Leftwich hooked on that halfback dive smack for the rest of the game. You just watch. Note the first down run. There's a lot, a lot of really bad offensive coaches. If they get one successful inside run, they just can't. They, can't, they feel like they got free yardage, they feel like they dominated, and they just want to keep going back to that well. And it's a bad well to go to. But yeah, you had a good time for free. Don't try it again. You know, you don't rob the same bank twice. You rob that bank and you get out and you do something else. You get a job. Here, Brady with a 17-yard hitch. That is great arm talent. 
That's a really tough throw to make. I don't comp pop passes as throws. If your five-year-old sister can hit that, I don't think that I should grade an NFL quarterback on the merits of it. That's not a, that's a handoff in my book. All right, Brady, all day to throw. Godwin comes open late. That's a good throw. Took good zip to get it out there. You know, drive the left hash. But, I mean, it was, it was wide open and he had all day. Illegal formation, that's bad coaching. Buccaneers just doing uh, incompetent franchise shit. They've made a habit of it. And the Bucks won't get the snap off before the first quarter either because before the first quarter ends, either because they are bad or because they are dumb. Not really a huge difference. Brady going deep. I don't know what Mike Evans is thinking here. But I also don't know what Brady's thinking, because he's got Godwin right here. And and you just gotta take what you can get. Right here, that would be a very good throw, but a very makeable throw to a star receiver. I, I don't know if Godwin lost the ball in the sun, or I mean, Evans lost the ball in the sun, but I still think it was overthrown either way. I'm grading it as bad, but I'm not, su I don't have a ton of conviction. And look at that, the Buccaneers for the second time on three drives, punting from the Panthers' territory. It, it, just fireable. Right, not to mention their fourth-round punter kicking the ball out of bounds. First down halfback dive, because it's just all we fucking do. And no, I'm not a Buccaneers fan. I say we because I put myself in the position of a scout or coach on the team I'm grading. So, if I were to watch a Packers game, my least favorite team in all of pro sports, I would think of it as we. Alright. This play sequencing is terrible. Remember, it was a first down halfback dive. Second down, it was like a gadget handoff to Godwin. And then third down... Oh, I guess I got a first down. Never mind. Okay. So the pedestrian throw to Godwin is fine. The pedestrian throw to Gage is fine. We can live with these. Nice pocket movement by Brady. Ball just a little too high. It's a bad throw. If Mike Evans can't catch it because it's too high, it's a bad throw. Uh, that's just a bad play. Who is this that just absolutely gets walked? Donovan Smith just not deserving to be in the NFL. Uh, I thought that those days were past him. That is a no-fault sack, and I'll even give Brady a plus move for putting, uh, putting up an effort. You know, who knows? Maybe you get lucky. You know, honestly, he almost got lucky. I thought he was going to pull out of it right here. All right, third and 24, what are they going to do? I kind of love that play. It didn't work, but I kind of love it. See, the Buccaneers have good plays, and they've got good players, and they've got a great quarterback. It's just that the sequencing and the, the execution is all off all the time. And this Jake Camarda guy is a terrible punter. <laughs> all right, drive five coming up. All right, P.J. Walker led a pretty nice touchdown drive just there, and if you want to see more of how P.J. Walker did that, I'm going to put a card to the video that I did of P.J. Walker. Here, Brady with a bad throw while getting hit. It's a bad throw with a plus move. He was being pressured, so I get it, but you got to have that throw off the ground. Here on second down, good throw. It wasn't great. Uh, it could have been better if he keeps that ball up a little bit. He probably saves a second on the clock, but, you know, whatever. Here on first down, he takes entirely too much time and then throws a pickable. That's terrible. He's clearly panicking. His brain is going to mush. This is just not the Brady or even the Bucks, really, that we're used to seeing. That's the play he should have had on second down. Now you're in field goal range. But instead, that is just a pedestrian throw against soft coverage. The Bucks are floundering. First half. First half, we got five drives. Three of them were fairly successful getting into plus territory, but... Everything looks clunky, and Brady's not quite Brady. You know, this is probably a B first half if I had to just ballpark it without having actually plugged anything into the algorithm. I'd say it's about a B first half, maybe a C plus just because of those two pickables. If Brady puts on an A performance, they're probably winning this game, despite the terrible coaching. And that's been the difference this year. All right, on a drive six and the second half. All right, first down screen. Love to see it. Don't ever run the ball. You pay your receivers too much money. You pay your quarterback too much money. You're too explosive. Throw the ball. All right, first down pass. 
Solid amount of time for Brady. Why is nobody getting open? Let's see what happened. Well, they bracketed the tight end, so that's not there. This little curl here by the running back, that's not open. Clearly, they're running something vertical on the left side, and they're running like a curl here. Nothing comes open. And it's a plus move throw, or honestly, I'm just going to call it a regular ass throwaway because that was a ton of time in the pocket. He should have been able to figure out something. But that's a really nice plus move and a good throw. Brady created that opening with the pump fake. So typically, this kind of throw would be pedestrian. Like, it's going to be about five yards. But you'll see, this is completely blanketed. Brady uses his eyes and his pump fake to manipulate the defense and open up the, the throwing lane to his tight end. He created those yards. So even though it might be a pretty easy throw to hit, it's not easy to get this linebacker to go from in perfect position to make an interception to completely lost. And the broadcast does a pretty decent job of showing how Brady uses his eyes to fake like there's a curl over here. Linebacker doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> That's just savvy stuff, man. All right, third and two. That ball should get out to Godwin already. He wants more. See, here it's a good throw because he's giving a star receiver a legitimate shot at the ball, but it could have been a lot better. Like, it would have taken a great play to catch that ball. But it also would have been an elite play if it had been completed. So, it's good. You know, he got two hands on it, and it's a star receiver. You trust those dudes, but it's not good enough. You could argue it's bad. Drive seven. All right, I think I said this is drive seven. Who fucking cares? First down, play action. Good throw. Nice job, Brady. That's the guy we know and love. Ton of zip, right on time. Perfect ball placement. All right, play action on second and five, and another good throw. Now, that was really soft coverage, but Brady put that on a line. If that was in coverage and still completed, it'd probably be a great throw. But we got to downgrade it because it was super open. Frankly, I don't know what Mike Evans is doing. He had a rough day because he should have turned that upfield and gotten another 10 yards. Just not Mike Evans' day, not Tom Brady's day, not the Bucks' day. Good plus movement to slide out of that pocket and then to find a dude in double coverage nine yards downfield. Look at this. Double coverage. That's, that's Shaq Thompson. That's a good covered linebacker. He fits it in there now. It got pixelated because the film gods don't like me today. But... I mean, he's got, a, he's, he's got three dudes on him. That's zip right there. That's a good throw with a plus move. Love to see that. All right, second and one. This should be a shot. On second and one, you're down. You got to take a shot downfield. Instead, they try this weird back shoulder wheel bullshit, which I really hate because right here, you've got kind of a natural pick. Like, nobody actually has to do an offensive pass interference, but you put these cornerbacks in conflict. 16 right here is in-breaking personally, I'd hit him right in the nuts and I just let him, you know, take it diagonal for another five yards. But if you don't like that, you still got this flat. And if you don't like that flat, I think this guy's curling. So you should be looking right over here. I don't know what Brady's doing looking at the running back and this decoy receiver. Okay, so right here, 16. He's walking for 15 more yards. He could take a nap. Brady, what are you doing? Brady's fumbling this play to 16 like he fumbled his marriage to the hottest supermodel of all time. This is bullshit. You hate to see that. That is not only bad, but it is disappointing and, and indicative of a greater problem. Like, that's something you don't see from Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't miss wide open plays for large chunks of yardage. And then this fourth down call, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Third and one and fourth and one, you run the ball with your, un, you know, below average, oh, out of shape, overweight, running back. I don't love it. He got Tom Brady. QB sneak it. And if you can't QB sneak it, throw tunnel screens. Come on. Drive it. All right. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers third string secondary holds up. And it's still just a seven point game late in the third quarter, despite complete ineptitude by the Buccaneers. But they're accomplishing nothing. Where is this screen supposed to go? You got Leonard Fournette double covered because they've completely... Like, you play action into a halfback screen, this is going to happen. And if you do it a few times in one game, it's always going to happen. I don't know what they were thinking, but that's a that's a regular throwaway. It's a slightly negative play because your average mobility quarterback can make something out of it. Brady's not that, and we know that. That's a bad throw because he just put it behind the receiver. Like, 
I wouldn't force it here. I probably wouldn't throw this screen with a with a free jumper here and a free defensive back here. I don't want to go to the all 22 to see what the other receivers were doing. It looks like it's just a decoy clear out route down here at the bottom. And then some kind of decoy corner routes up here. But come on, man. It's a bad throw. Like, regardless of if the processing was good, it's just a bad throw anyway. That is a plus move and a pedestrian throw, but that's not getting you a first down on third, especially when you know that your conservative-ass coach ain't going for it on fourth and three from his own end. So the shitty rookie punter punts it, and we go to drive nine. All right, before we get to drive nine, I just want to make space to show that I graded this improperly on the PJ Walker video. That's a fucking pickable, man. I don't know what I'm thinking. If 35 has nuts between his legs, he catches that ball. So I was a little gracious on uh, old PJ Walker in his video. I gave him a plus eight and a half, and it should have been a plus five and a half, and he probably deserved more of a B plus than an A plus. But alas, here we are. I will not go back and redo it because I don't have the time. It's not even the fourth quarter, but the Bucks are down 14, and it feels like nut-cutting time, and that's just indicative of how bad the Bucks have been on offense today. Brady hits a good throw on first down and a pedestrian throw on second down. The first down throw just had so much zip to get it in there. It wasn't a far downfield throw, but it was difficult. Not a lot of guys got that. More mental mistakes by the Buccaneers. It's just becoming repetitive. You guys got sick of me saying pedestrian. You're going to get real sick of me saying, what are you doing when I watch Bucks games? There's a pedestrian pass. Sorry, we'll call it routine this time. Brady drops back, empty pocket, and holy shit, does he thread that fucker in there. This is stupid. This, honest, like, literally, it's stupid. This is a bad throw. You should not throw this ball into triple coverage, tight triple coverage. But the fact that he hits this ball 25 yards downfield, fitting the ball in, like, the corner of the needle, or uh, the, yeah, the corner of the eye of a needle, that's elite. How many dudes can do this? Josh Allen can do it. Patrick Mahomes can sometimes do it. But that's just fucking absurd. Elite! He's still got it. I don't know. Maybe the uh, the mental issues of because he's going through a divorce and losing his family. I think that ball gets tipped. No, that's just bad. <laughs> that's just a terrible throw. Again, the kind of stuff you don't expect from Tom fucking Brady. But here we are. Okay, remember how we were talking about using leverage to spin a receiver earlier? Watch what he does here. If he leads the if he leads his tight end out, he's probably going to get caught. Right? But he sees that he's got a flat-footed defender, so he puts it right on him. He's and so instead of trying to carry it out and get chased down, he's cutting it right back upfield. Beautiful. Pedestrian throw, but the kind of savvy stuff that buys you yards after the catch. That's a pedestrian throw as well. Scotty Miller's just a head case. I love him because he's fast, but he's a head case. Here's some plus movement by Tom Brady, but a negative run. Tom, you're 45. Don't run. Just don't do it. Throw the football. It's not like he got time to spare either as we approach the fourth quarter. There's a nice routine throw to Mike Evans. It was tight window, but that's Mike Evans. That's what you get. Fourth and two, you gotta get this. And they do. Look at that. Routine, but <laughs> with the Buccaneers, routine is anything but routine. You know what I'm saying? Here, Tom Brady fucks up on first down. Watch this. Look at this right here. This is what you call a mini flood. So you've got 88, the tight end, Otten. He's gonna run a little slant. And 14, Godwin is gonna run like kind of a, a diagonal veer slant right behind him. So this is zone coverage. Whoever's covering this zone in the middle is going to take the first man. He's going to carry with Otten over here, which means nobody's going to be left to cover Godwin. I wish I could illustrate this for you guys, but I got a hockey game to get to. So right here, Godwin is just sitting, and you got to hit him right in the right in the tits, right here, bullet it in there, and hope that he can eke out two more yards. Now you're in short yardage. But instead, Brady tries to go outside. Lord knows why. There was it was not a better opportunity. It was a tougher throw to a lesser receiver. Bad play, Brady. Not only are his throws off, but his mind's a little off too. And it's just not what you expect to see. Here, the ball just slips out of his hand. I don't know. This is... the fuck, man? Is that tipped? Is that a jumper tipping it? No, he was just trying to throw it under the jumper. And he missed. Boy, that's bad. I'll give him a plus move, but that's bad throw. Third and goal, Brady, great pocket movement, and again, just a bad throw. And if I'm being frank, look at this. 
That ball was not getting caught by a buck. That's for damn sure. Even if it's accurate at chin height, it, it's going the other way. Meanwhile, we got a high low right here with one defender trying to cover two dudes, one of which is in the end zone. That's, uh, that's a touchdown to Gage if he throws it. That's not good. I don't know what the fuck this guy's doing, man. Like, Tom Brady's under a little bit of pressure, but it's not egregious. And through 10 or 11 drives, I forget which, because I'm just, my brain is numb from watching this. He hasn't been himself. All right. I mean, it's 21-3. This game's over, but that's a great throw. It's at times like this where I would typically think about stopping the grade, because, like, what are you going to get out of garbage time? I'll continue grading. I'll just take everything with a grain of salt. That's a great throw. Borderline elite. He's threading it in there. That's awesome. And it's the kind of chemistry you want to see him building with a young tight end who I think is very talented. In, uh, is it Cade or Clay Otten? Who knows? Otten. Guy from Washington. Look at that. Hitting him for a pedestrian, too. That's... Maybe tonight uh, he'll be feeding that tight end a little bit more. Who knows? That's routine. Third and two, mental mistakes, drink. You drunk yet? Hapback screen, drink. I know you're drunk now. Fourth and eight. God, that's sad. And Brady with a pickable because that play was telegraphed. I mean, I'll run you through it, but just what are you doing? This is clearly a streak. This is some kind of deep developing route, like a streak out. Or a street corner, rather. And then you basically got a cross here. So this guy's going left, and this guy's going right. Where does the defender go? The ball's got to be on Otten already, if you want it. And it's not. And yeah, Otten slips, so maybe it's not technically pickable. Let's call it bad instead. But it ain't good, man. I think we're done here. Let's just see. One, two. All right, guys, so we plug it into the chart. Brady, 47 dropbacks that were gradable. So that's just passes and runs. We don't, we're not grading the throwaways or the sacks. That's different. That's a different thing. We're not grading the pocket movements. They are an, a bonus to a play. Just aimed passes and intended runs. 47. It's high volume, a lot of pressure. You really find the truth of a performance when you get up to that many dropbacks. On the other hand, you got somebody like P.J. Walker last week, 21 gradable dropbacks, 21 th aimed passes, really. Super low sample size. Anything can happen. So Brady had the two elite throws, two great throws, nine solid throws. That's really good. That's 13 positive throws. That's awesome. Problem is he also had 11 bad throws and two pickables. That's terrible. He also had that one really stupid run where he should have just not run the ball. I would rather see him throw the ball into the stands and not risk an injury, not risk a fumble. Frankly not, lose yards. Pardon the dog. Not my dog. Overall, Brady was accurate on only about 72% of his passes, which is low for him. And despite having a low, cheap play grade, which is good. You like typically having a low, cheap play grade. It means that your quarterback's the one driving the the production rather than being schemed up like pj walker was or like joe burrow frequently is but he had more negative plays than positive plays 28 percent negative plays it's not a high rate but it's you know it's not like you see with jimmy garoppolo or even marcus mariota this week but it's higher than you would like and 26 percent positive plays is not very good so c plus for tom brady in week seven that's not great and there was a lot of chaos going on around him a lot of really bad play was Brady the problem against the Panthers? I wouldn't say quite, but he also wasn't necessarily the solution. Now, if Evans catches that deep bomb, scores an opening drive touchdown, maybe everything goes differently. Maybe if they stopped having so many really stupid mental errors, causing penalties and creating bad scenarios for him early in sets, maybe things go differently. Maybe if they stop wasting plays with runs up the gut that go for nothing, maybe it ends differently. Maybe if they don't punt three times in plus territory and turn the ball over on downs twice in plus territory, maybe then game looks different. I think coaching is really the big issue with the Pan with the Buccaneers, rather. And the Panthers as well. But I think that the Buccaneers have plenty of talent and their players are not playing poorly. Like, yeah, Mike Evans had a drop, maybe two or three today. Or in this game, rather. And he didn't look good. 
but he's still Mike Evans. He's still getting open, and you can count on him catching most wide-open moon balls that hit him in the hands. Like, that's not going to keep happening. No, they can't run the ball too well, but it doesn't matter. You got Tom Brady. Keep throwing the ball. Tom, protect the ball. Don't put it in harm's way like you did in this game. And I think the Buccaneers will be fine, but I don't think that they can get that coaching up. I don't think it's going to get better. I think Todd Bowles is extremely conservative, totally afraid to throw the ball, totally afraid to go for it on fourth down, loves to punt, loves to run up the gut. I think Byron Leftwich is right there with him, total oaf. Somebody asked him why he keeps running on early downs when he's got the worst EPA per play on early down runs, and he laughed at the reporter, asking what EPA meant. That tells you everything you gotta know. I don't love EPA, I don't love any stat, I love film, but dude, if you don't know what it is... Frankly, if you watch the film, you know that the runs up the middle aren't helping anybody either, right? So, I think the Buccaneers are in big trouble. I don't think Brady's really the problem, but he sure as hell wasn't good in this game. One, two. So if you come over here, I haven't graded that many Tom Brady games so far. I've only graded five of seven. Now that I say that, I sound kind of crazy. I've only graded 189 dropbacks so far, and we're not halfway through the season. Anyhow, he hasn't been Tom Brady so far. Like, you see a lot of B-minuses. He's been fine. But he hasn't really been Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at his median, mode, and average grades. They're all about 2.7. They're all about a B-minus. And this game was no different. It was a C-plus. It was fine. He certainly was not the issue. But you expect more. I'm not going to get into what's happening to him, maybe. I mean, I would he would be crazy to not actually be negatively affected by his wife possibly leaving him and his, you know, family being in upheaval. He's also 45. Maybe he's just not as sharp as he used to be. Physically, it's all still there, and you saw it in this game. He made a couple really dumb decisions, and maybe he's frustrated. I mean, it, it could have nothing to do with the home life stuff. His team is playing really bad. Yeah, like, really dumb, really. And their coaching is just putrid. So, it might not be on Brady. But, that's all I got for you today. Uh, what's going on in Tampa Bay? I don't really know. I know the coaching is terrible. I know that the offensive line has some new pieces that are making a ton of mental errors. And in Luke Gadecki's case, uh, physical errors. But, really, I'm playing wait and see here. I don't know. Tune in next week. Maybe I'll have something more for you. I got to watch this Buccaneers-Ravens game on the delay anyway, so we'll see. Until next time, hasta.